Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design a spread footing from scratch subject to uplift load using as the foundation. When we design a footing for regular gravity load, the goal is to keep the bedding pressures under the allowable uh, limits and then design the footing for uh, the punching shear and the one-way shear, design the reverse according to the bending moments, etc. But when we design a footing for uplift load, the criteria is completely different. When you design a footing for uplift load, the forces that counteract that action are the footing self weight, the pedestal self weight, and the soil cover weight. These three forces combined resist the pull out of the uplift force. So the bearing pressure is no longer an issue here because the gravity is probably very small. The punching shear and the one way shear is not an issue either because the load is, is minimum. So we need to size the footing so that it's heavy enough to counteract the uplift force. Before 1998, the design procedure to check for uplift was to divide the uh, resisting force, 0.9 dead load, over the wind, the uplift, and that ratio should be more than 1.5. So the minimum safety factor was 1.5. So many structures were designed this way and it worked perfectly, but there were some issues to be clarified on this procedure. Mainly, if the 1.5 factor would be applied to the factor loads as well, or just to the service loads. Another issue was if uh, the 0.9 dead applied also to the footing self weight and to the soil cover and to the pedestal. In other words, this 0.9 that was related also to the uh, overburden on the ground structure or just above ground, just from the superstructure loads. So these concerns were clarified in the uh, ASS 798. For the first time, they released the uplift uh, load combinations. In other words, it wasn't necessary anymore to check the safety factor against uplift. The check was done automatically in the load combinations. So the 0.6 that minus win for service load and a 0.9 that minus 1.6 win for factor load. The safety factor was included in these combinations. If we divide 0.9 over 1.5, the ratio would be 0.6. So the safety factor was already implicit in this load combination. So we no longer needed to, to design or check any safety factor anymore. Everything was implicit in the load combination, which was a, a great way to simplify the, uh, the design uh, concerns. Also, the factor uh, load combination regarding to uplift was uh, published. So the concern about if the safety factor was included or not in the a factor load combination or in the factor load was already addressed in this uh, load combination. So this simplified and clarified the design, uh, the design criteria. And this philosophy is still active now, nowadays. So we no longer uh, check the uh, uplift safety factor, we just apply the load combinations corresponding to uplift and we are okay. Let's uh, design a footing for uplift using as the foundation. For example, let's design a footing for an uplift of 20 kips. Let's say that we don't have any dead load, nothing from the superstructure. Let's rely on the self weight and the soil cover to counteract the, to counteract the, the, the uplift. For wind, let's assume that it's 20 kips minus 20 kips in uplift. So we have that scenario. Uh, this is, these are the, the, the loads. Let's see what is the default uh, footing here. 12 by 8 by 16. Okay, let, let's check immediately the uplift calculations in this uh, with this. Okay, just for this footing, the default footing as the foundation, the ratio or the safety factor would be 1.42, which is perfect. 
it will be, will be our case. Let's see if we can uh, optimize a little bit this. For example, if we use 11 by 11 footing, just a square footing, has to be concentric, so no, is not offset, zero eccentricity, zero, zero. Let's say that the uh, pedestal would be 18 by 18, quite typical. by two feet uh, high. This is the, the pedestal. So basically we are defining something like this, a pedestal, a short pedestal with a steel column and an uplift load, a soil cover and a, a spread footing. Soil cover, one foot. Let's uh, get rid of the water table. Let's put the water table down there so it's, it's not a factor. So let's say 11 by 11 by uh, 16 inches, we have an uplift of 1.9, it's, it's very comfortable. Let's go a little bit smaller, 10 by 10, 1.57 is still very, very comfortable. So even smaller, 9 by 9 by uh, 15 inches. So 1.23. So basically we have a footing nine by nine by uh, one foot three inches. And the uplift load uh, is, you know, for this combination 0.6 dead is only 12 kips. If we consider the pedestal cell weight, the footing cell weight and the soil cover cell weight, the three factors uh, that compose the uh, overburden, the damp one force of these three components is 14.7 versus 12, so it's uh, 1.23 safety factor, which is okay. We are using the S710 load combinations, so that's why we have this uh, uh, load combination here. So with this footing size, uh, we are uh, okay in the, in the, in the uplift uh, analysis. However, this footing would be uh, very limited in the capacity to resist overturning. That's because obviously the net uh, gravity load would be very, very small. We have 12 up and 14.7 down. So we have only 2.7 down net. That's a very small uh, uh, gravity load. And of course, the overturning capacity would be very limited uh, for this reason. If we had any lateral load that produces any overturning moment in this footing, so this footing would need to be larger and heavier to increase the gravity, the net gravity load, and increase the overturning capacity. In the detailed calculations, we can follow the uplift analysis. Basically, the uplift safety factor is the ratio of the resisting uplift, which is the pedestal weight, footing weight, soil cover weight, and the buoyancy, which in this case is zero, over the uplift load. If we do the math, the ratio is 1.23, which is a safety factor, more than one. Should be noted that the ratio is compared to one, not to 1.5 as was in the, in, the, in the old days. That's because, as I explained before, the safety factor is already implicit in the in this in the load combination. So these numbers correspond to these load combinations, which includes also the safety factor. So 1.23 is more than 1.0. The analysis is, is is okay. Once the footing has been sized for uplift and is heavy enough to counteract the uplift force, the next step is to design the rebars. Obviously, for this scenario, the top rebars are the ones working in this case. Uh, because the top rebars would be in, would be in tension the, and the bottom portion of the footing would be in compression. Normally the stresses at the top of the footing are so small that no rebars are necessary. It's good practice to add at least the minimum area of steel at the top of the, of, at the, top of the footing. So in this case we're going to use top rebars, maybe number fives, and number fives. Let's check. Everything is passing in this scenario. 
So the uplift is 1.23, overturning, we don't, we don't have any issue with any, you know, any overturning or, or sliding because we don't have any lateral load. Uh, shear is so small that, you know, it's, it's relevant, zero, zero 0.09. The reverse, as I said, the top reverse is, is minimum, and basically is, we are applying the minimum still. So we are at 78% of the minimum, so we are okay. So this is a very simple uh, example of an uplift design of uh, spread footing. Uh, obviously, if you have any other loads, lateral or gravity, obviously this would be more complex, uh, but uh, would need to be combined with the uplift force as well. This simplified example is good enough for the explanation of the uplift uh, procedure in the design of a spread footing. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you in the next video.